Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of It's About Time. Anyways, today, I know it's been a little while since I've been back, so what's up guys? Anyways, um, so, let's see. I wanted to piggyback off of uh, Drew and Nishan's last episode about rust dial corrosion and things like that. I thought it was very, very interesting. Um, how they were talking about, you know, why things like that happen. And there's kind of like an integral part of, you know, why do watches get like corroded and rusted? And why, you know, do does dust get in? And how does water get in? You know, through the case back is, is certainly one thing, but there's another key component to that. And uh, I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit more specifically about the different types of crowns that are on different kinds of watches. So before we get into today's topic, and we also have some other honorable mentions I'm going to get to in a little bit. Uh, so buckle your seatbelt, hold on tight, this will be a fun episode. Um, what is on the wrist? So, you know, as always, oh, now I have another, uh, I guess I got another little piece of news for you. You guys will have to come with me to, to see that. Um, so guys, on the wrist today, it is the Gucci G timeless. I'm just going to tilt that a little bit so it's not like crazy in the light. Uh, so yeah, accurate to about, I don't know, six, seven seconds a month. I don't even know. This watch is just absolutely amazing. Fits me so perfectly. I have literally been wearing it every day since like January 26th when I uh, got it. I reset it twice a year. Once for when daylight savings time goes on and once for when day daylight savings time blah, 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 goes off. Um, other than that, I don't reset it. Um, however, I guess if I need a new battery or servicing, then that's when it would uh, be reset. But I'm going to get to that a little later. A little piece of news for you guys. Um, okay, so let's talk about... Turn that off for a second. It's kind of like my uh, notepad for today a little bit. Um, today's topic, right? So watch crown positions, okay? So I wanted to... Let me see if I could just bring something up very, very quickly just to give you guys just a little bit of a, um, like a reference point here. So, all right. So guys, uh, simple thing here, right? Every watch, or just about every watch, I should say, because I think that they do make some watches that are crownless nowadays. Almost every watch has a crown to it, okay? For example, my Gucci crown, okay? Let me just bring that a little bit more into focus. Crown is right over here, okay? Um... So most crowns are the push and pull type. Um, there are also some crowns that are screw down crowns and there are other crowns that are called lock crowns. Um, I guess maybe there's some other sort of kind of crowns that I don't know about, um, but those are the three big major ones that you will see mainly push pull and mainly screw down crowns so you know what i'll tell you what you guys can actually come with me for a second uh, because i'm going to show you guys let me just move this a little bit out of the way perfect so all right so i guess i'll break the news to you guys now so when my uh, gucci watch does go in for servicing of course you guys know me. I cannot live without... Sorry if it gets a little dark here for a second. I cannot live without a watch. It just doesn't happen like that, okay? So I did buy one that is an automatic, although I'm not uh, wearing it, you know, all the time for that matter. Um, but I'll bring it with us. Welcome to my closet, by the way. I'm going to bring it with us uh, so I can show it to you guys. Uh, not, not really a review on it by any means. It's just a... Uh, just an example I want to show you guys of the type of, the most common type of crown. Um, so anyways, I got a brand that um, it's very, 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 very similar. So I'm just bringing the camera back. There we go. We are back. So very, very similar to uh, my Gucci in terms of, I guess, like style and design. I'll show it to you guys. Uh, the one brand that I've had probably the most out of like any brand is... Bum, 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 drum roll, whatever. Oris. 
trying to get that like in a little bit of focus, but it's like kind of working and kind of not. I feel like it's because of the sun and this terrible camera. So this is the watch that I got that when this one does go in, because eventually it's going to go in, I'm going to be bringing it to Gucci themselves so they can uh, test the seals, gaskets, and everything else like that. Make sure everything is good uh, to also replace the battery when that happens. Um, so this is the new watch. So this is the most common type of, uh, of crown. So I'm going to bring the camera just a little bit closer. So you guys can see here the crown. I'm still I'm like trying to like focus this thing, but it's like not focusing, okay? So this is the crown all the way in, okay? Now, I'm going to pull it out one click. I don't know if you guys could hear that, but it's out currently one click right now. Usually when that happens on any watch, when it's out on the first click, um, that usually controls the date. Um, so again, I don't know if we've done a video on this, but I just want to touch on it. Uh, I would always change the date around 6.30 a.m. I wouldn't do that at any other time. You can't set on automatic watches. You can't set the date in between other times. But anyways, so that's the crown out one click. Okay, I'm going to pull it out once more. Now you guys can see it hopefully kind of even if, yeah, man, maybe. All right, so the crown is out a little bit more. You guys could probably see from like the first thing, this camera is really not cooperating too much. Um, so that's typically if the crown is all the way out in that kind of position, that means that water could get in, dust can get in, anything can get in, and the watch is, you know, besides the case back being off also, the watch is the most vulnerable. You never want to store your watches with the crown out. It's just not a smart move. Always make sure that after you're done setting the time, the date, and everything, and I'm going to do this a little closer so maybe you guys could hear it and see it. See how that, yeah, see, that, that actually went back into place. So now, and I press on it a little hard, the crown is in, okay? So that's the most common type of crown is push-pull. That is what my Gucci watches. Um, and again, there's nothing wrong with a push-pull. Um, some people say it's the most vulnerable crown. Um, you know, it's kind of true because, you know, when you're in a push-pull, if, like, God forbid you get your watch caught on something like a piece of string or anything else like that, the crown could, you know, pull out. Um, so it is the most, you know, vulnerable type of crown technically, but it's not, like, it's not horrendous um, as long as it's sealed up properly. So I'm just moving the camera back a little bit. So as long as it's sealed up properly, you have no issues. The second type of crown, I'm going to, uh, I guess I'll bring up this image for you guys. Um, it's the most typical um, to this watch personally, and that is the Rolex um, Datejust. Um, hands down, the most common type of uh, screw down crown. Uh, that is where the crown itself will... Uh, screw into the side of the case. So for just for like example, uh, I just want to show you guys just an image of uh, all right, this is like a perfect image, right? So Rolex, they are known 100%. And of course, the crown is right over here. Now the crown you guys can see is set snugly against the case. Again, when you take the crown out to the first position, you usually set the date, especially on the Rolex date just. And when you take the crown out to the second position, that's going to change your time. Always want to make sure, always, 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 on these kinds of watches, you not only have to push the crown in, but then you have to apply a little bit of pressure and then turn it uh, clockwise. Not counterclockwise, but clockwise, okay? So with watches with screw-down crowns, push-pull, you're just going to press it in, take it out with the screw down crowns, once it's all the way out, push it all the way in, and then you're gonna apply slight pressure, turning it clockwise. And you wanna make sure that once that kind of crown is in, make sure that it is tight. Make sure the crown doesn't move at all. Make sure you know it doesn't come out. I mean, don't like yank it, because you know crowns are pretty sensitive and it's the engine to the watch, you know, the key, so they say. Um, that's usually one of the first things to go on a watch because people are constantly taking in and out. Um, so always make sure it's tightly secured against the case and 
you know, just leave it at that. Let's get to uh, the last type of crown. And this is a good example of a watch that I used to have. Again, Oris, one of the brands that I've had the most of. This is the Oris BC4 Chronograph. Yeah, it's a beast of a watch. And this crown right here, you can tell, it's a little larger than the Gucci that I have, the Oris that I have, even the Rolex that I showed you. So, with this kind of watch, very interesting. It's called a locked crown. Is it more secure than a screw down? I, I don't know. Debatable? I, I don't know. Um, a lot of times they say that screw down crowns over time, because maybe it rubs against the skin or something, tend to loosen up a little bit. Whereas the lock crown, that literally, it locks into place and it doesn't move, doesn't do anything, even though it rubs against your skin or whatever it is. So with the lock crown, it's actually a lot easier to use than a screw down crown. Is it more water resistant or is it, you know, more uh, dust resistant? Not necessarily. That all depends on the seals and the gaskets that are within the crown. I will say Rolex does one hell of a job with uh, sealing up their watches. But, you know, then again, so does Oris or any other watch company if it has a pretty high water resistance. So with a lock crown, what you're going to do is it's very similar to a screw down crown. The only difference is that you don't have to keep screwing it down. You literally just like open it and close it, open it and close it. Although when you do close it, again, when you press it against this, uh, the side of the case and you want to make sure it's always pressed all the way in, that all you do is you turn it just like maybe like one turn or half a turn clockwise and it locks into place and you'll feel the resistance once you get there. Um, so again, I've had that watch before. Uh, I thought it was very cool. It's a lot easier than a screw down crown. It's just, you don't have to do as many turns like with a screw down crown. It's a lot, you know, about probably four or five turns, maybe give or take. Whereas with a lock crown, it's just like a half a turn or just like one turn. Um, and it gets you, you know, in. Um, so, you know, I mean, which one, you know, it's always best to go with, uh, the most secure kind of crown, like, you know, screw down crown gives you the greatest kind of uh, resistance against, you know, it coming out or God forbid something happens to it or whatever. I remember Drew told me a story, his Rolex Datejust a while ago, he had a screw down crown in, but then it popped out, popped off, popped out, whatever it was. He was in the shower and the thing kind of got ruined. He had to send it to his watchmaker. So it does happen, like, you know, push pulls. One of the things that I think we've said, especially in our water resistance episodes, always make sure that if you're going to go around water, number one, get your watches tested before you take them around the water, especially vintage, just to make sure that, you know, the seals and gaskets are good, they're secure, and uh, that you're able to bring the watch around any sort of water resistance. You know, you can take it any watchmaker. Listen, send us an email. We'll take care of that for you. We have uh, watchmakers that do that for us. Um, but, you know, also with the crown, always just double check to make sure if you're going to bring it around water, always make sure that... This thing right here, make sure that, that thing is like pushed securely. Like, see how that's like not moving at all? Make sure that's really secure into the side of the case because if not, very, very bad things are going to happen. Like, you know, um, besides dust getting in, once water gets into a watch, it's kind of like game over. You have to really redo a lot of things and it's going to cost you a little bit of money. So anyways, that was a little bit on that. Um, I want to give some honorable mentions here. The first thing is to, uh, as I was watching it this weekend, this guy right here is from uh, hottime.com. Patrick Reed, winner of the 2018 Masters Tournament. And uh, as you guys can see, he's wearing a particular watch with a particular brand on a golf ball. It's called Hublot. Also a uh, big sponsor of Floyd Mayweather. Uh, junior, 50 and 0, we all know him, we did an episode, Drew and I on the golf course, check it out. Uh, so, yeah, so he won the Masters, and one of the coolest watches that Hublot has, I just wanted to bring this up, is this, it's a uh, golf watch, yep, crazy, right? So, let's see, down here, let's do this, right? This window here represents the whole number that you're on, this uh, little window here represents your shot total on the golf course. And this hole represents over here the number of shots per hole. So on the 18th hole, three shots, and you're at around, it says 69. Um, and all these different pushers here on the side will operate 
uh, all the different numbers here. I don't exactly know how, like I know how it works, but I don't know which pusher operates which one. I believe this is for the shot. This is for the hole, and then it just does the total, and you could probably reset it a certain way, besides obviously telling you guys what time it is. Um, as you guys could tell, I think it's a pretty large, significantly uh, sized watch. Uh, let me see if I can find... Uh, it's called the Hublet, Hublot Big Bang Unico Golf. I just want to see if I can find you guys the exact price and the... Um, dimensions to it um oh so it's a 45 millimeter watch um but it's lightweight 98 grams made of tex 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 texalium or whatever it is uh fiberglass and aluminum uh let's see it is water resistant to 100 meters again i don't know if it has a screw down crown or not probably does um is there a price on it? Oh, $31,500 just became available March 2018. Uh, power reserve of 72 hours, in-house caliber movement, 43 joules, and 358 total components. Beats at 4 hertz or 28,800 vibrations per hour. So very interesting. Uh, one more thing. Uh, so, sorry, I'm not trying to make this a long episode. I just miss you guys so much, and I have to go into a few things. So today, I went on to my uh, watch app, uh, which is Watch Time. Uh, if you don't have it, go onto your app store, get it. It's available for Android and for the iPhone. Um, so anyways, I love to read up on my watch news every day. One of the things I found was so cool. So a lot of you guys out there probably use Spring Bars. Um, not use Spring Bars, I'm sorry. Spring Bar tool to remove your spring bars. Spring bars are in your um, top of your bands over here. It's to use to change out the uh, the bands that you guys have. These little things that are right in here, a little hard to tell, but they're, you know, right inside the uh, case thing over here. That's what holds the band onto your watch. So anyways, most people that use spring bar tools, me included in the past, can't stand them, they suck. They break and they're just a pain in the butt to use and whatever. So anyways, I came across this thing and it's called boblabs.com. So I'm gonna just show you guys the website right now. B-A-U-G-H-B-L-A-B-S.com. Big shout out to them. Um, so it's a spring uh, watchmaker spring bar tool. So this gentleman um, is a... Uh, He's an engineer, product designer, and things like that. Big watch enthusiast. Didn't like how you know his spring bar tools performed. So he decided to handcraft and hand make his own tools. Uh, I believe that they're made out of aluminum. And they have this very cool O-ring on them. The uh, black part here and here as well. And when you set them uh, down on furniture or whatever, the tool itself doesn't scratch. And the surface that you're putting it on doesn't scratch either. Now, I will warn you, it's a little bit more pricey. It is, yes, you're reading that right, $49.95. Um, he only makes a certain amount, uh, and you could buy them now. Um, I, I personally probably won't just because I don't change out my watch bands, and I love my stainless steel bands. In case something happened, I probably would buy it. Um, and then on his website, there's like reviews on it and things like that. Uh, from what I read today, just absolutely phenomenal. This guy is like really kind of a little bit of a genius uh, when it comes to these things. So here's an excellent picture of it. Um, you know, again, for those of you who change out your watch bands a lot and are looking for like a really good heavy duty quality tool that's lightweight, um, I believe that this is really fantastic. And again, changing out your spring bars on your watch band or just removing your watch band with a spring bar tool shouldn't be a pain. It usually is with most tools. Um, you got to do it on kind of like a special, like if you do that on like a piece of furniture, you're probably going to scratch up your furniture. You want to have something underneath the watch in case, you know, you do go through with the spring bar or something to make sure that it doesn't scratch anything. So I did want to give just a quick shout out to that. I think it's kind of just a cool ergonomic design made of aluminum. Again, very lightweight and handcrafted from uh, machines that uh, he personally has. So anyways, guys, that is it for today's episode. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm so sorry I've been absent. I'm back. Um, let's see. I hope you guys like the Oris and everything else that I talked about today. Remember, push-pull crowns. Push and pull them, screw down crowns, 
push them against the case and screw them down until they're tight and lock rounds. Again, just push them against the case and just rotate it until it's locked. You guys will feel the resistance. Always make sure that those are in, especially before you go around water or you're storing your watch back in the case so no dust or anything like that gets into it. It's been so great to be back with you guys. Uh, I'm going to be doing probably a few episodes over the next few days. We need to get up to 100 episodes. I'm looking forward to that. Oh my gosh. Um, let's see. You guys may see Drew and I back together on Saturday. That would be really cool. I miss the guy. Um, other than that, that's about it. So guys, don't forget to like, subscribe, send us emails, any future episodes you want to see, any questions about today's episode or past episodes or just any questions that you guys have in general. Don't forget to submit them to us. Love to answer them. We love all you guys, our fans and everything else like that. We like to educate you guys. So anyways, next, uh, the episode with Drew on Saturday we're going to do how to sell your watch on eBay. It's kind of a big thing. We're going to provide you guys with a lot of useful information. I'll have to bring on my computer probably, which is totally okay. Um, so anyways, thank you guys again so much for watching. And I look forward to seeing you guys on the next episode. It won't be with Drew, but on the next episode of It's About Time, we'll see you guys back on Saturday, Drew and I together on It's About Time.